Welcome to the Shivan Library. And today we are playing Swedish Old School and testing out the deck Triple S. This is a more aggressive variant of the blue white shell that is very common in Swedish Old School. Let's start things off by looking at the deck list. On the left side, the creature package. Seven Alliance, Suchis and Sarah Angels, the three S's of the deck. You might be thinking, why not play the Serendip Efreets? Those are cheaper than Suchis, but they do die to City in a Bottle, which is an actual real threat to a deck like this. And of course, they are really bad against opposing Sarah Angels, having only three power and damaging you every turn. This makes it basically impossible to race against the Angels. From white, we get Source to Plowshares, Disenchants and Balance. From blue, Counter Spells. Mana Drain, Recall, Brain Geyser, Ancestry Recall, and Time Walk. And of course, the fun stuff, Copy Artifact. That is really useful in many ways. It can copy Suchis, it can copy Mana Rocks, and Jame Day Tomes, or even a Chaos Orb. You can even copy a Mistress Factory should you need more of those. For fast mana, this deck runs the full package of All Moxen, Black Lotus, and Soul Ring. Then you have the card draw of Gem Day Tomb and of course the multi-tool Chaos Orb. And you also get the Black Splash in with the Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. Taking a look at the sideboard we got the classic Red Hate with Blue Elemental Blast and Cycle of Protection Red. And for a little more life gain you get the Spirit Link and Ivory Tower as well. But what's actually interesting here in the sideboard is the extra copies of Copy Artifact which allows the deck to go even more aggressive. By copying those Suchis and Mishra's factories, you can really ramp up the speed in early game. The sideboard actually allows the deck to also pivot completely to a control mode. You can basically take out all the lions, all the Suchis, and bring in all the control cards from the sideboard. This is a really useful trick when you're playing against a deck that has a lot of creature removal, especially going into game two. All the Wrath of Gods, they have all of this sorcery speed removal, all become absolutely dead cards. But let's see how the deck does in actual gameplay. Alright, game number one. I'm on the play, I won the dice roll, but unfortunately had two bad hands. Down going mulliganing down to five, but the start is still good. It's seven alliance on turn one, which is exactly what I want to see here. And Yet, I still don't know what my opponent's playing, and it is a plains. Not usually a good sign, and that lion might not be long for this world. Strip mine, and the lion goes in for the attack, and it's a tap, and it is the source to plowshares. That is exactly what I expected to see. That opening with the open plains is never a good sign for the turn one creature. And going for the Mishra's Factory, well, that's not going to be too much of an issue. I have the Strip Mine in play, so that won't stand in my way. Fellow Stone, Little Mana Acceleration. At this point, I believe we're looking at some kind of variation of the deck. Of course, you knowing the video title, you already know what it is. Me, at this point, I'm still making some wild guesses only. And here is where we see, oh, there's the Ancestral Recall at the end of the turn. That is going to be quite crucial. Key moment here, opponent getting to load up. I'm down to three cards in hand and no board presence at all. This game might be over much sooner than it actually is. And if this is the match against the deck, the game will be a long one, but... Getting that control situation right, um, right in the front, and Library of Alexandria hitting the board. Now my strip mine is having two potential targets. Let's see how it goes. And Mishra is going in for the attack, and there's a decent chance. So, strip mine gets to pick the better target, and at this point, it might even be qu quite useful to just take out the land and reduce the mana count, try to keep the tempo up try to get some quick gameplay in, but without an actual threat, that tempo play might not be just so good. But let's see, get the fourth land, do we see, oh we see a book at this point, yeah, 
I'm loading up for that grindy game at this point, not going for the board presence out yet. Oh, and an unfortunate disenchant to hit it right away. Well, so much for that plan. All right, let's see. Let's see. Is, this, is there going to be a new threat or is this going to be a long one? The low mana count at this point might be an issue, but there's the fourth land. They have now even actually a triple white, double blue. Everything's available thanks to the Felwar Stone and my City of Brass. See? And it is the book. That is gonna be scary, and I used my first disenchant already on that Mishra's factory. If there is no answer to that book, that's gonna take the game away. And I got my first Suchi in. Start to put a clock to this game, and if it sticks, it's five turns and we're done. But knowing that this is the deck, there's probably gonna be a handful of answers to clean that up. Usually we're expecting to see four disenchant type effects, some being probably Divine Offerings, four Swords to Plowshares, and a Wrath of God or two, plus the additional balance, but balance most likely will not be played at this point. The land count is even, but I only got one card in hand, and the opponent is probably gonna go and reach out for that Library of Alexandria, just to get those extra cards in. But now thinking what the play is gonna be. Another Felwa stone. They're gonna get all the mana they need at this point. I already got the four. If there's no other actions, there's a book draw incoming. And the Suchi going for the kill and it it connects. Four points down to sixteen. And at this point, yeah, making sure that that library will not be a problem in the later game. Stripping it out, I got four land still, double blue, double white, I got everything I need at this point. And now let's see, what's the play for the deck? Oh, that's the factory. Okay, they got one blocker at this point, but that will not be a clock, unless there's gonna be a few more of those incoming later on and this is exactly the point for the deck player where they need to find some way to lock the game up that book is already a great start it is gonna grind them so many cards get them the card advantage they need to kind of steal the game get ahead and basically just run away with everything now the only thing standing in their way is the Suchi, and that Suchi might be getting getting removed. Now the question is, are they thinking about removing it or expanding their own board? Alright, my turn on the Suchi is going for the attack, and there's the swords. Yeah, that was a safe play, getting rid of it, now they have much more time to do what they want. And now let's see, they go for the book draw, and that's an obvious, but what is this? There's a disenchant. That book got now dealt with, and that will buy me a little bit more time in this match, because this is about to go pretty much to that blue classic draw go magic. There isn't, neither player has a good threat in play. There's that one Mishra's factory. But I still do have 24 life at this point. The only big issue is I only got one card in hand. And that might be pretty much the reason this game is gonna slip out of my grip. But let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes and how slow this will play out. This one strip mine coming in the board. I have basically nothing good to remove. Uh, you can't take out anything to take out like double black or double blue or double white. 
of course the double black doesn't really matter in this match because demonic tutor and mind twist are the only black cards in my deck so that's pretty much non-issue in that point uh, the mission factory is coming in but well, two damage at this point doesn't really matter i can take plenty of hits and my life total probably will not matter at all in this game the only thing that matters is how long this game is going to go and can I finish it out before the deck takes full control of the match and just grinds me out completely. And opponent thinking, thinking long and hard what to get, what to do here. And there's the demonic tutor fishing out for a card. Now, that's a good question. What are you gonna take at this point? I have no board, you don't need removal. My lands are not a threat, the strip mine is already in play, the mistress, uh, the uh, library of Alexandria has already been played, ancestral recall has been played. Time walk doesn't really do much at this point. Mind twisting for one, well, not really. And the question is do you want to go for more card draw? Or do you want to bring in a threat at this point? If you kind of feel like you got the game locked in, a threat would be good. But from my side, not a single Swords to Plowshares have been played at this point. So getting an Angel and playing it most likely will just end up getting it removed. So the safe play probably is going to be either Brain Geyser or some other means of drawing some extra cards. Uh, let's see, this is a long way. It ain't an easy decision. And what's gonna be the card? Oh, the card has been picked. And a quick shuffle, do we get to see it immediately? Oh, the suspense is killing me. What's the card? What's the card? And right away, tapping the mana, taking the Felwa Stone and strip my and and it's a regrowth. Well, that is actually pretty good. So that's one way to get the ancestral recall back into your hand. But doesn't fire the recall immediately. Kind of guessing I might have a counter spell in hand and a small brain geyser for two. Yeah, at this point I'm pretty much digging for answers any way I can. The blue mox, well, it unlocks the fifth mana for me. And there's the ancestral. I'm pretty much tapped out, no answers. And those two cards, they're not counter spells. I am just playing the game, waiting and trying to get some better draws. No threats, no answers. If I remember correctly, I do have a sword to plowshares in the, the second card. Most likely just as useless in this situation. But now it seems that the deck does need some help building up. Because even though the game is in a stalemate situation currently, they don't really have anything going on. They don't have a card draw engine. This the only the one mistress factory is the only thing that's pretty much can make any difference in this board state right now. Going for my turn, and this is gonna be probably just some quick draw go magic. But no, there was a good draw. There's the Sarah Angel. The big swinger, the mox, the blue mox actually did help me. I got that fifth mana up. Angel's coming in. Let's see how long this angel's gonna last. It's only four hits. It's four draws against a pretty stacked hand at this point. And the deck's going for the draw. And a long pause. What's the plan? At this point, there probably might be 
a wrath in hand. And the question is, would you spend a wrath to kill one angel? Well, in this board state, you probably would. Because I'm all tapped out, and it's been pretty clear at this point, I don't have any good cards in my hand, otherwise I would have been playing them already. So, going for the lands, not going for the lands. Slow decisions, but let's see, let's see what's the situation. Just passing the turn. Okay, so no wrath, no wrath there. Third card in hand, but swing first. Ooh, going for the mana and... Yes, it is a source to plowshare. That angel did not get a single hit through. Yep, all threats, all three threats have been seen. Savannah Lion, Suchi and Sarah Angel and all of them face the same thing. Swords to plowshares, taking them all out. Well, I have life. That's a, that was this something. I've been gaining 10 life in this match already. So that Mistress Factory's little swings aren't going to be that effective against me. The only thing is that, given the option, I probably want to take it out just, just to like make sure my little ground creatures get through. And a recall for one. What is it going to be? What is the card I have been using at this point? One sword's out and the book back in. Yep, that's a good trade. Those swords aren't going to be really useful. The opponent most likely has four, four to six targets in their whole deck for that card. So the question is even, are the Sarah Angels in, in the main board in this variant? Or are they still waiting in the sideboard at this point? So yeah, the factory has been activated. And yeah... There's the second swords and a little life back. But now I know that all my creatures can get through that if I draw lions or other smaller ones, I don't have to worry about the factory anymore. The life situation, 18 to 24, is one of the big problems for me at this point. I need a threat right about now. Something good, something big. And let's see, we got the book last turn. Is it gonna stick? Quick thinking, and no, there's a decent chance waiting in the hand. Unfortunate thing, unfortunate thing at this point. Passing on the turn, and let's see what is gonna happen at this point. What is the next problem I'm having, having to deal with? Now, this also shows the kind of annoying issue about playing against the deck. They have answers to everything. Pretty much, you have your creatures, they have removal. You have your card draw engines. You have your all other long-term tools. They have decent chance for those. There's divine offerings. There's wraths. There's pretty much everything you're planning on doing. The deck has an answer for it. And for me, it's just draw, go, draw, go. Now we're just waiting which player gets their tools in first. Yep, nothing but quick turns at this point. Yeah, not even bother probably looking at the cards. I know this. If it's not a threat, it's not going to be played at this point. But this time... Do we see some action? And counting the mana. Tapping four, is it? Yes, it is another book. Yeah, that's a problem. But there's counter spell. Ooh, great, that was a good hit. But nope, no, no. No luck for me there. There's an opposing counter spell. The book sticks. And I don't have a disenchant or any other removal for it in my hand right now. And if I'm not gonna be top decking those soon, this game is gonna be pretty much over and done with. But that's five mana. Ooh, there's the mind twist for four. 
No, I already took out one of their counter spells. Now, let's see if I can take out all the rest. There is four cards in hand, so this would be a total cleanup with the mind twist. The unfortunate thing is, there's the book. So the opponent can refill pretty much at will. And yeah, showing, what do we get? We have Wrath, Disenchant, Balance, and a Lightning Bolt. Yeah, not really useful. The Wrath would have been probably good. Lightning Bolt doesn't really matter. Most of my creatures have toughness four or more. So those on things. Balance probably wouldn't be played at any point. At this point, the land count is already in the opponent's favor. They have the hand count. That would be basically just your panic button in the end. And now the book is probably going to be the key piece at this point. Well, that one measure of factory. Well, if it takes 12 turns, yes, that thing can kill me, but I think that's not the game we're going to be seeing anymore. Especially when the board is already pretty clear, the hooks are in, and at this point it's just... When is the finishing move going to be? Those book draws, those are the ones that matter at this point. Uh, let's see, I'm just drawing from the top of my deck. I got nothing basically going on. I'm just looking to get finding the disenchant, finding some big fatty to attack with, but no luck, no luck at this point. Opponent basically just getting double the draws every turn. And me with a low hand count, this is pretty much over. Oh, that's the second factory. Now, those could actually cause some damage. Getting four points a turn, that's that's not nothing. But not going for the attack yet. Just keep keep drawing, keep drawing. And this point, yeah, probably just the safe bet is to keep on drawing, just making sure the game stays playing and the game goes on long. Because the longer it goes the better the deck is gonna be. And at this point, the pawn has probably seen that there isn't gonna be much of a red card threat from my side, and of course the mana would not be useful. Yeah, some 6-point fireball isn't anything to scuff at at this point, but... And time walk in this point is just pretty much extra draw. I just need to find this answer. And that's done any means necessary. Swing with the factory, dropping the opponent down to 17, uh, sorry, 15 at this point, and that's that's a slow clock. And especially with those two Mr. Factories blocking, most likely it ain't gonna get another swing, or at least any crucial amount of swings. Let's see, fixing those mana, seeing what to use. The four and a tap, and that's the book. Let's see, the opponent's pretty much drawn quite a lot of mana at this point, so if they get any expels, any brain geysers, those are gonna be extremely useful. What I'm gonna see, soldering, yeah, even more mana. <laughs> like there was a shortage of that in any point of this game. So what are we looking at now? 10 points in the land says about 15 so uh, 15 points of mana at this point, so that's gonna be a lot. The factory is coming in, one getting sorged. Trying to pick up which art is better. And the spring goes down, the summer stays in. And me dropping down to 22. Comfortable life total. Not really a problem. Yeah, but the biggest thing about that swords was basically just getting the blockers out. Trying to get this measures factory to get some more damage in. 
but doesn't seem like it's gonna do the trick. Now there's a decent chance the factory goes away. And I'm looking at even more problems. My only small clock has now been taken away. And this is not looking good anymore. Now we're just pretty much waiting for that final blow. What's gonna be the thing that will eventually kill me? Well, the first thing probably gonna be is the factory is gonna be knocking down little by little. And there is the book draw getting that extra card in. Yeah, always go with the safe draw first. Get the most information you can. Because mana is not gonna be an issue. Yeah, tapping four for the book. Some situations probably gonna be difficult, but here there's just so much mana in play. You can just start your turn by drawing the extra card. And the colors doesn't really even matter. Yeah, use the soul ring instead of the planes. Yeah, and there is the brain geyser. That's gonna draw quite a lot. Let's see how much mana is gonna be sunk into that one. More and more and more. Yeah, you don't want to overdo it, but at this point, even draw 5, draw 7, wouldn't be a problem. Just discard the useless cards. Yeah, going for the save 5, couple of extra cards, keeping the mana up. You can see there's 4 blue mana left, so a double counter spell. Most likely, that's going to be used pretty much to protect the book. Or, if I happen to draw balance, countering that out would be crucial. Taking away one of the optional counts and there's a time walk found, yeah, that's gonna be a problem. He's getting to reset the board, get all the mana back. And with five fresh cards, well, probably four at this point, because time walk most likely was one of those drawn. We're gonna see... A new fresh turn, a new fresh draw, the book draw, and and see if there's gonna be anything here that's gonna change the game. And now at this point, the deck probably has everything they're gonna be needing in this match. Now the question is the finisher. Yep, yeah, there's the red mana. Of course, they had the Moxin, that's the Moxin as well, and they had the Felwar Stones to produce the mana, but showing that volcanic island is a surefire way to show that, yeah, the fireball is in there, there's the Black Lotus, there's more mana that you could ever need. See, quick thinking, yeah, knocking down a few points of life from me. That factory dropping me down to solid 20. But at this point, I'm starting to do the math. How many lands do I see? How big is the fireball going to be? Do they need to spend all their mana or can they just get something? And I did find the balance. And if that's the, that lands, is going to be extremely good. That will ruin the mana base. But no, there's a counter spell in hand. And I got no answers. That's a card I would have fought over with no questions asked. So it's pretty clear at this point that I don't have any counters left. With the opponent, they're probably going to just want to do the safe, safe way and find some backup. Get the extra draws in. Take that turn. And now just counting all the cards in hand. Checking out the resources, seeing what's going on. And yeah, there's the four tundra. There's like what? Four tundras, four moxen, four mana in the manor. Okay, there's the fifth moxen. Factories, strip mines, lotuses. Yeah. Doing the math already, but probably gonna looking at a safe turn. Getting that extra draws. There's no rush at this point. The opponent has all the time in the world. They are safely in the driver's seat. And we're just waiting for the finishing blow. 
The only issue is that if they let me draw, there is a chance that I might be picking up those counter spells. Only one has been played, so we're looking at three more and the mana drain. But that's only one card per turn, and they are getting two. Oh, I draw something good, and it is an angel. Set angel. Good, but probably not great at this point. It is still only four damage. There are 17 life. Unfortunately, not even a exact four turn clock. It takes the fifth turn to go all the way to the end. But that's the way I gotta do it. That's the way I gotta hope. Opponent, even more lands. They get, they have just all the mana. And now I guess it's time to be doing the final thinking. How's the situation going to be sequenced out? How much time do they have? What's the order of doing things? But still going with the safe solution. I only showed a Sarah Angel. It's pretty sure that was my top deck. I didn't fight over the balance. So most likely you could deduce that the last card in my hand is probably dead at this point. Most likely creature removal. And here's doing the math. Yeah, I'm kind of guessing the fireball is incoming. The question is just when. The angel getting in at this point, it's just pretty safe. Just let it through. I can't kill you with any kind of X spell. I can't deal the damage fast enough. Just pass the turn and hope that card was a counter spell. No. And there's the actually the small annoying feature about playing the deck. Untapping and sorting out your mana is extremely annoying because your board is gonna be full and uh, you better hope you're not playing on a small bar table when doing so, because, yeah, that's gonna get crowded fast. And of course, looking at that board, only one card in there is not a mana rock of some, si some kind of a, or a land. The only actual card in there is the Jame Day Tome. And the opponent doing the math, counting out how many are there. Are we gonna go with the safe safe play? No, no, this this looks bad. This looks bad. You don't do the math unless you're in a situation where you can win. Tapping everything. And there it is, the fireball. Counting out, is it 18? Just to get the dead money. Two lands in hand, and that is game one done. All right, game number two, and I'm on the play. Uh, I decided to go with an even more aggressive sideboarding, bring in copy artifacts, divine interventions, taking out counter spells and balance and recall. It was a bit too slow, and starting out the both mulligan ones, and my hand was pretty nifty, looking at few suchis and a copy artifact. No fast mana. But that Sol Ring is going to save me right here. Taking one damage from the Zero Brass and it is a copy artifact. Targeting the Sol Ring, getting me a mana rock of my own. Now at this point, I'm already knowing that my hand is going to kick ass starting next turn. Now just hoping there won't be any surprises coming up. Alright, opponent taking his turn. Let's see, do we get any nasty surprises at this point? A long wait. What can it be? And it is a library of Alexandria. Now, there's a quick point. The opponent doesn't actually have any colored mana available. That is crucial for me at this point. I know there isn't going to be a Wrath come incoming anytime soon. And that is a Gem Day Tome hitting the board. That could dig my opponent out from this, 
but uh, let's see how it goes. Taking my turn, heading in, and it is an ancestral recall, draw three. The opponent stepped out, it is a safe place to put it in. Let's see, another City of Brass coming in. A painful mana base, but at this point I don't think it's going to be very crucial. And 4 mana, and it is a Suchi. Now we get a clock in the game. 4 points of damage every turn, that is a 5 turn clock. Barring, of course, the uh, Mistress Factory blocking it. Going to opponent's turn, let's see what... Oh. Answers do they have? And it is nothing. Turn passed straight away. And there is no colored mana available. That is going to punish him hard. Let's see. Swing with the Suchi, hitting for 4, dropping him down to 16. Already taken 3 damage of the City of Brasses, but that is going to be totally a non-point at this this state of the game. Mulling my options, seeing what is good. And it is a divine offering, hitting that book, getting rid of it, removing opponent's chance to draw even more answers. And of course, the instant draw, no questions there. Going back to 20 life. And let's see, what do we have next? It is a copy artifact, the second one, and this time we're making another Suchi. And it sticks. The clock has just been reduced to two turns. An opponent gets to dig their way out of this hole. Draw for the turn and let's see what's in store. There are some long pauses in this game, and the situation does look dire. Drawing the extra card from the city of, uh, from the library of Alexandria. They already were at seven cards. And there are no quick answers at this point. Tapping the soul ring, and it is a fellow was stone, and that's gonna be good. The fellow was stone, of course, picking up any color of mana the opponent's lands can produce, and in this case, there is the city of brass in play, which means it can do everything. So that is a rainbow mana rock, and do we see even more? It's a long wait. Suspension is killing me. And it is an underground sea. The opponent's getting their colors at this point, and which is going to be scary. Let's just hope that the Suchi is going to stick. And a long wait again. This is the must. This must be a cru uh, crucial point. What is going on in the opponent's head at this point? They're well stacked, a lot of cards in hand. And what do we see? What do we see? No thought about passing the turn, but no, no, going for a second play. And it is a second Felwa stone. Now the situation has just turned completely around. Out of no mana colored mana sources into two rainbow fell stones and an underground sea. This just got turned over. A Mox Jet, a little extra mana for me. And another divine offering. Those mana rocks are gonna be hitting the bin. Of course, taking the mana is the disenchant or divine offering waiting there. And it is a disenchant, killing one of the Suchis. Yeah, we were just thinking it. Which it would it be? The original Suchi or the copy? And it is the copy. In this game, there isn't much difference. Just, there are no important cards that could hit only artifacts and not 
enchantments as well. There are no tranquilities in these kind of games. And another Suchis. Those are just coming in. The opponent is really looking at heavy damage hitting him all the time. At this point, it's pretty much starting to be Wrath or Bust. The simple swords will buy him time, but it pretty much needs to be a Wrath of God, or this game will be over in a hurry. Yeah. Opponents really in the tank at this point. They need to find answers, and they need to find them quick. Tapping two, and it is a demonic tutor. If you're going to have an answer, that's the way to find it. But what could it be at this point? I mean, you can always go ancestral. That's an easy answer, but that's not going to dig you out. A fireball could be a possibility. Get rid of one of these Suchi swords would do the same. Disenchance. But that was a quick search. Let's see what it is. Do we get to see it immediately? Quick shuffle and a back to game. Let's see, the suspense is killing me. And it is, it is a Tundra. He went for, he went to get that white mana. Ooh, that's an interesting play. That does not bode well for me. And for mana, there it is, the Wrath of God. Did not expect that so quick. And that really twists me around because the game just went all over all the new directions. Let's see. Ooh, and a Mishra's factory of my own. Let's see. Can I rebuild this game out of nowhere? Quick mana check and Ooh, that's good. Five points of brain geyser. That's gonna refill me immediately. And it's gonna hit me really close to that seven cards for my own library. Now we're gonna get back into this game. This is gonna be a really swingy game, judging by this early start. Really fast start. And it is a black lotus hitting it and cracking it for white mana for seven lives. There's a game you won't often see. Got absolutely nothing else for Black Lotus except one Seven Alliance, but I think in this state I just need to be as aggressive as possible. Going to the opponent, and let's see, what did they draw? Ooh, another factory, that's gonna be bad. And the ground is getting choked up. Alright, let's see the play. For white, four, five. And it is a Sarah Angel. Ooh, this is gonna be bad. Now the tempo has been swung completely to the other direction. Those Suchis would be good right about now. Those can really race with the Sarah Angels. If they choose to block it, it's an equal trade. But that vigilance is going to be extremely handy at this point. Let's see. And at this point, my hand isn't looking good. There is about four or five lands in that hand. So I am going to be looking for answers quite quickly. And if I happen to take mana out of my City of Brasses, that damage is actually going to matter quite a lot at this point. Quick check on the graveyard. And what have I used? Not a single offensive spell, and the angel starts hitting it in. Let's see. Turns past and at now six cards in hand. Is there anything or should I just wait for the library? I still have a couple of turns left. Even if there's nothing. Yeah, the safe bet just past the turn. Go to that seven cards. A strip mine would be probably the worst thing to see right about now. But let's see. The angel is coming in. 
no, the factories don't need to do anything at this point. The ground is completely blocked. There's no need to trade resources. All they need to do is keep the game going. Draw the extra card from the library. Is it any good? And it is another Suchi. That, that was a good draw. Not great, but good. Makes it so that the ground... I do have some ground reach at this point. Should I need to go attacking? But the problem is that I cannot really race at this point. Because the opponent gets the first attack. And that's going to be game over for me pretty soon if I go down that route. And of course, the opponent doesn't even actually need to block the Suchi. He can just let it go. He can take two hits, no issues, and swing back with those factories, dropping my life total even faster. And there's Tundra, six cards in hand, and pass the turn. That library is going to need to do work quite fast. And let's see, the angel ticking in. I'm dropping down the fire. Pretty much can't use those City of Brothers anymore at all. Let's see, a good top deck right about here. Come on, nothing good yet. Extra card from the library. Nothing is happening. Though that means they isn't they're gonna be any good card. And now do the quick math for the library. How low can you go to get that guaranteed next turn card? So I know I have a counter spell and a disenchant waiting there. And I might need to use them. So I know I can't drop the six right now. I can't build the board much anymore. Yeah, drop the second blue land. Make sure I have to counter spell mana up. And pass the turn, seven cards in hand. And do we see any more surprises coming in at this point? Opponents really thinking hard. What is there left? Checking the graveyard, does it mean there's a regrowth or recall? But there isn't that many good cards left. Alright, making sure the Angel connects first. Yeah, those City of Brasses are gonna go right about down there. I ain't touching them at all. Fortunately, haven't seen any Icy Manipulators at this point. Ooh, even tapped the factory. And it is a regrowth. But there isn't any good cards immediately. So what's it gonna be? The Demonic Tutor? Yes, it is the Demonic Tutor. And that is pretty much as dangerous as it can be. Because it can be anything at this point. So yeah, firing up that counter spell right away. The opponent's so low on mana at this point, I just need to find a removal and keep this game going. And the turn is passed. Now the final chance. First draw, second draw. What's it gonna be? Long wait. And it is nothing. I got absolutely nothing good in my hand. The angel is going to take the last point and it is game over for me. Alright, yes, the angel was just too bad. Oh, and the chaos orb was top of the day. Would have been the next draw. And uh, so swords to plowshares as well. So, what did I learn from this match? Mm not much yet. Well, only that the deck is a top tier deck for a reason. Triple S will have problems if you just try to grind it out against it, as it does have better answers. 
the second game was a good example of the speed Triple S can have, which is what I feel like I need to rely more in this matchup. But join me back here for the next match and we'll see how things line up against other decks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.